All right, everybody, welcome back to our Blueprint Fundamentals Visual Scripting Crash Course for Creatives. We are talking about uh, variables today. We're going to be doing an addendum to the variable sections by community request, and we're going to be talking about vectors. Don't freak out, don't run away. We're not doing all the crazy maths stuff. We are actually going to help dispel some of the common confusion that happens with vectors, and we're going to be using Unreal and we're going to be doing it visually. So you can solidify in your mind and clarify where these common misconceptions come from. So first, let's talk about what those are. The problem with a vector variable in Unreal Engine, or, or pretty much any, any time, is the term vector is overloaded. What that means is vector can mean a couple different things. So let's talk about them. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about the use of vector to represent a list of numbers or a point and a geometric or physics representation of a vector. So let's hop into Unreal and check it out. So here we are, we have our third person character blueprint and uh, in our blueprint, what we are going to do is I'm just going to create a, a variable of type vector and I'm going to call this the start position. Now this one is relatively straightforward because it's generally, it makes sense to you. It looks like when you compile this, and you look over here on the right at the default values, you have your start positions of, generally people look at this and they think X, Y, and Z. In this case, I have set X, Y, and Z to two, two, zero. If we look at this in our level, what I've done is I've set up a temporary axis. This is our X axis and our Y axis, for example. And I have visualized this point as this yellow dot here. Now, keep in mind this point two, two, zero is technically in Unreal units 200, 200, zero. The reason I'm using 220 is, is it's just a whole lot easier to talk about and say. So for, for all intents and purposes, think about this as 220. That is just a point in space. So the first representation of a vector variable can be thought of as a list of numbers. And in uh, computer science and data science, any list of numbers is a called a vector. And it can be two numbers, three numbers, four, any length of numbers. We use them because it makes sense to represent a coordinate in space. Why? Because a coordinate in space is three digits. In this case, in a 3D game, X, Y, and Z. However, there are many other uses of vectors in Unreal Engine that don't represent X, Y, and Z. So let's take a look at our, an example. An example is our friends over in the material world. The material world, if you are in any material, if you right click and type constant, you'll notice that one of the things that pops up is constant two vector, three vector, and four vector. Well, wait a minute, why is that? Let's bring up a constant three vector. That is because color is often represented as RGB, red, green, and blue. That's three numbers. Oh, wait a minute, three numbers, that can be represented as a vector. So the reason these are called constant three vectors is because it is a vector with three numbers. If we bring up a constant two vector, you'll notice that we have X and Y. These might be your coordinates, for example. Finally, we have a vector four. In this case, it represents red, green, blue, and alpha. So the idea, the first example of a vector or type of vector is a list of numbers often used to represent points in space or colors in Unreal Engine. Now it's important, and you'll notice whenever I create a, ve a vector that represents a point or a list of numbers as I name it as such. So in this particular case, I call it this start position. You'll see me call things start location, start position. It's just in my mind, it triggers that it's actually a point in space. Now, let's talk about the overloaded part of this. And that is the geometric or physics representation of a vector. That one's a little different, even though it looks the same. So this is what we mean by overloaded. A geometric or physics vector is a direction 
and a length. That's all it is. And the easiest way to think about it is an arrow that points at something. When do we use this? We use this all the time in Unreal. And this is why we're going to be spending most of our time talking about this today. Okay, so let's talk about a few of those things. Character facing. Which way is our character facing? That way. That way, that's an arrow in a direction. It's like a direction and we're pointing that way. Uh, look at which way our head is looking at. The weapon aiming. When we're aiming a weapon, it has a direction. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about length. Uh, for example, let's say that you want to launch a projectile. You can think of the force that the projectile is going to launch with as the length of the vector, or in this case, it's usually called magnitude. And that's why it's called magnitude. So a vector is a direction with a magnitude. The reason most physics and math people call it magnitude is because the length, the magnitude, can represent different things depending on what you're talking about. I just talked about one. In physics, it could represent the force, the strength of the force. In uh, geometry, it might represent the distance. But the overall point is a vector has a direction and a length or magnitude. And if we were going to visualize the vector as it is drawn here is this red arrow. So as I mentioned, this red arrow has a direction denoted by the way this arrow is pointing and it has a length. In this particular case, this length is 2.8. We'll get to that in a second. One of the things that is important to note about this vector is represented by the exact same number in our blueprint as the position. So for clarity, let's call this forward vector. Even though it is exactly the same representation, when used as the geometric version of the vector, it has different meaning. So couple the unique things to note about this. This vector, if I duplicate and copy it and move it over here, I've created two vectors now. Technically, they are the same. You're thinking, wait a minute, no they're not, they're clearly indifferent. That's because we're dispelling one of your first hangups. You need to think about a vector as a direction and a magnitude. Both these red lines are facing the same direction and they have the same magnitude they are the same vector. So when, or what is a good practical example of when this might be applied? A directional light is a good example. A directional light, no matter where you are in the scene, it applies the same amount of light from the same angle, wherever you are in the scene. So it's important to understand that from a vector standpoint, these three vectors are exactly the same. If I were to duplicate this point, these three points are clearly not the same, not even close. Now, interestingly enough, even though these three vectors are the same, the vectors represented by each of these points are not. So it's important to understand that the second one, for example, is actually represented by this vector here. Okay, not the same. All right, so back to direction and length. Now, let's use Unreal to kind of show what that might look like. So if we go back to Unreal, let's take on our tick, let's take our forward vector, okay? And let's get the length of it. We just type vector length here, and then let's print it. So we're going to print out the length of our forward vector. And when we do that, you'll notice that it prints out 2.828427. So Unreal's calculation of the length is a whole lot more accurate than mine, which was 2.8. But if we go back, I'm going to change the color of this so that you can read it a little bit better to sure hot pink. Uh, you'll see that it's 2.8. now. There's some cool things that we can do with vectors to uh, help us in all of our development needs. One of those is we can change the length of a vector by multiplying it by a single fixed scalar, a single float, if you will. 
So what, what, if, what if we wanted to double the length of our vector? Well, what we can do is we can think about that as a new vector. If we actually, we, we don't even have to do that. We can do that over here. If we basically double this length, remember these two vectors, let's delete our third one so it's clear. These two vectors, the red arrows, are no longer equal because they have the same direction, but they have different magnitudes now, different lengths. This second vector is the first one multiplied by two. Let's do that in our blueprint just to show what we're talking about. If we take our forward vector and we multiply it by a single float precision of two, and then we actually get the vector length of that, and we print that number, we'll change the color so it's easier to see the, the two separate and go with more of a red. You'll notice that we're going to be printing, in hot pink we're printing 2.8, and in almost red we're printing 5.6. So you can actually multiply a vector by a decimal, and what that does is that changes the length of the vector. This is awesome because it's very powerful because what that means was if there was a way for us to get a vector of length of one, we could use that to do a lot of really cool things. For example, let's say that I wanted to check to see if there was a wall 500 units in front of me. If I knew my character's facing as a vector and it was of length one, I could multiply that by 500 because what is one times 500? 500 and see if it hit the wall, for example, okay? Or I could use it to say, I want to move my character exactly five or 200 units, let's say 200 units forward. Well, which way is forward? I have a forward vector. If I could get it to be of length one and I multiply it by 200, I know exactly where I need to move to. And we can do that because there's other cool maths stuff that you can do with vectors. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our forward vector and we're going to do what's called normalize it. So if we take our forward vector and we normalize this, and then we get the length of that uh, vector length, and we print that, What we're going to end up, we'll do this in a nice bright green. What we should end up with is a value of 1.0. It's the same vector, it's the forward vector, it points the same way. It's just that the value, the, the length of it, the magnitude of it is one. So you'll notice here, we have 2.8, that's our original vector. We doubled its size, that gave us the 5.6. Then we normalized it, which gave us one. So now if we wanted to, we could multiply that by 200, 500, whatever we want and get exactly what I was talking about as far as being able to get a known length vector. This is super powerful. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to draw this. We're going to do a couple of examples where we're drawing these vectors using a debug arrow. And this is going to also help us highlight some of, um, some of the potential misconceptions. So first off, let's get our actor location which we have actually right here. Okay. And what I, no, I don't actually want our actor location. What I want is I want to get our actor rotation, get the uh, uh, rotation. Oh, actually we don't even have to do that. We can just get our forward vector. Oh yeah, actually we do need actor rotation. So with our actor rotation, we're going to use Unreal to help us. And what we're going to get is we're going to get our forward vector. The forward vector is the vector that describes the direction we're facing. Now, the cool thing about the forward vector is Unreal Super Smart, and it knows that we, it's probably more useful if it returns to us what is called the unit vector, a vector of length one. That way we can just very quickly start multiplying. So let me show you what this looks like. If we do a draw debug arrow in this case, we are going to draw an arrow from the point zero zero to the point of where our forward vector is. Now, I want to. I'm going to explain uh, why this is potentially confusing or something to keep in mind as we do this. 
here in a second. Let's do our duration of 0.03 because we're doing this on tick. And let's do a thickness of two. Okay. It's important to understand that when we draw an arrow, we're drawing an arrow that has a start and an end. This is not drawing a vector. And this is going to become important later. Okay, the start point is zero. The end point is the end point of our vector. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. If we go back here, actually, we're not going to be able to see it. You need to do a little bit of deletion over here. Let's move this character away and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go back to our origin, you can see we have this little pink arrow, which is very difficult to see. I want to keep these here for a second. Just move these away. And let's just take that normalized one last one. All the visuals for later. Okay, so if we go back to our origin, you can see there is now a hot pink arrow. And the hot pink arrow is changing direction. It is actually pointing, it's very difficult to see, it's pointing whichever way our character is pointing. Because what we're drawing is we are drawing an arrow that starts at zero and ends at the end of our character's facing vector. Well, the problem with that vector is, as I mentioned, it is of length one. So how do we make it so that we can actually see that? Let's multiply like we did before by a value, single precision float of let's say 200, and we'll feed that into our endpoint. Okay, so this is giving us a vector that represents our character spacing direction of length 200, and it happens to be drawn at the origin. And when we look at this now, when we go back and we go look at our origin, you'll see that we have a much more clear visual of which way our character is facing. So as our character runs and turns around, our debug arrow is drawing to face the same direction as our character is facing. So this is pretty cool. We have now used a vector with direction plus the fact that we can change the size and the unit vector to calculate our character spacing and draw it. Now, it might be more helpful if we actually drew this on our character, but we don't, we can't do that quite yet because we don't know enough of how to do that. So let's talk about two other things that you can do with vectors. So first off, direction, a vector has direction and a magnitude or length. We can multiply by a single float or decimal number and that will change the size. We can normalize a vector, which will give us a vector of length one, which is called the unit vector. Okay, cool, that's all great. But we can do some other things with vectors too. We can add vectors and we can subtract them. And it's important to understand the difference. So let's take a look at some visuals that I made here. And we will go and take a look over here. And let's take a look at this. So we have, let's keep that one actually. We have two vectors. We have B and A. Now, if you think of these, as being anywhere in space that you want. It is sometimes helpful to visualize, this is why we visualize these as arrows, it is some, sometimes helpful to visualize the addition of two vectors by using the end. So for example, if I add this vector A to B, it is effectively taking A, starting it from wherever B finishes, and the result of that is going to be a new vector, which is this yellow one. So this yellow vector is the result of adding A and B. And the order does not matter. That's important because if we take A plus B or B plus A, we get the same thing when we line these up. They are both going to result in a vector that looks like this yellow one, that's the result. Now, keep in mind that this is, for visual ease, here in space. But remember, it's only a direction and a length. Now, when might we use vector addition? We might use vector addition, for example, if we want to 
take our facing and move it so that we're drawing it in the right place. That is, that is one example of it. Uh, we could use it for uh, figuring out uh, which way, uh, you know, how, how far we need to go from where we are to get to this point, for example. Um, but the general gist is, if you add two de vectors together, visually you can think about it as lining the heads and the tails up, and the result is going to be this yellow line, and it is, the order does not matter. That is not the same for subtraction. So if we bring up our subtraction, can do let's take a look at the difference and I'm going to show both of these at the same time okay so when we look at these two it is important to note that we have the same vectors a and b denoted by the red and the blue arrows a minus b you'll notice that the resulting yellow vector points at a b minus a you'll notice that the resulting yellow vector points at B, the end of B. Now, technically speaking, it doesn't point at the end of B, it points in the direction of the end of B, because remember, they're not really there, but for ease of visualizing this in your mind, it's helpful to look at it like this. The big thing to understand is, A minus B is not the same as B minus A, and you know which way it's pointing because it always points at the first one you say. So if you say A minus B, the resulting vector is gonna point at A, if you say B minus A, the resulting vector is going to point at B. So let's use this knowledge to do a couple of things. So what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of these subtractions so they're not confusing. And then we're going to talk about our character facing okay so right now when we play we have our characters facing what we want to do is we want to make it so that it is actually drawing from our position because that would be potentially more useful so let me show you what is a common mistake in just the logic or the thinking of this so what we need to do you're, you're, you're so excited, your projectiles are firing the right way and something's weird, but you're, you're so excited, so you're like, okay, I'm gonna get the actual location and I'm just gonna draw this arrow to help me debug. And this arrow we're going to make a nice bright green and we are going to use our actor forward vector just like we did before as the endpoint. And you're thinking, oh, let's just plug in our character location as a start point. Watch what happens. This is not going to draw the right vector. The reason it does not draw the right vector is because you'll notice, what is it drawing? It's drawing from our character start point to the point around the origin, which is where our actor's facing vector is. Because remember, it has no concept of where it starts from. So this is actually incorrect for what the visual is that we want. So what we need to do is we need to use a little bit of vector addition. So think about this. You are at a point in space, a vector if you will, and you have a vector that is your facing. If we were going to visualize this graphically, if your character is over here, facing this way. This is a vector that represents your character's facing. This is a vector that represents your character's position. However, they're both technically could be at the origin. They start at the origin, for example, okay? Because they only have direction and they only have uh, a magnitude. So if we use addition though, we can get our result, what we want. Because what we want, this is what we're doing right now. We have our character's position and we have the character's facing. So right now what we're doing is we're just drawing our facing and it's in the wrong place. But if we add the vector that represents our character's position to the vector that represents their facing, 
what we end up with is, like we said, we just take the one, tack it onto the end at the tip. That will get us what we want for our display. So here we go in the math. If we take our characters facing and we add to it the vector that represents, just by doing an add, the character's position. Let's move this over and plug that into our endpoint. Now, the endpoint is going to properly reflect what our character facing is. And if we play, you'll notice that now our green arrow is drawing correctly. And that's because we are using a little bit of vector math to get the visual to line up. This debug arrow can be misleading. It is not drawing a vector. It is drawing a line between two points. You have to understand vectors in addition to get that line to draw the way that you want it to, for example, okay? So that is a quick use of vector addition to basically take your facing to line it up with your character. So you could draw, in this case, an arrow, but maybe, I don't know, maybe you're, uh, a great example might be a laser target, a laser aiming. So if you wanted to draw that, you could use vector addition to draw the laser from your laser sights on your weapon for your character to wherever your weapon is pointed. That's a great example. Because think about it, your laser sight is often displaced, so maybe it's up here, it's often displaced from your weapon. So you have your weapon, this is the way your weapon is facing, and it's just a vector that gives a direction. And the start point is going to be the vector that is represented by your um, by your line of sight, for example, and the rotations. And that way you can just displace that and you can draw, for example, your laser sight if you wanted to put laser sights in your game. So that is a good example of using addition uh, to visualize and kind of separate that in, out in our mind. So now we've got vector is a direction with a length and magnitude. We can change the size of it by setting the scale and multiplying, uh, scaling it effectively by multiplying by a number. We can normalize it to get it to one and we can add them. Now, let's talk a little bit about when we might use subtraction. So let's say that I have a point out here in space and my character is facing forwards. If I want, let's say I'm working with an enemy, if I want to have my enemy turn to face this point, I can use vector math to figure out which way is the new facing vector, the new forward vector for my character. And we can do that simply by subtracting the two points. So if we take this vector and we use this to represent Uh, actually, let me zero this out. Oh, wait, I picked the wrong thing. Very much so. Okay, let's zero this out. So we have a vector that points at our current character. The facing is not important right now because we're trying to change the facing. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And then we have another vector that represents what we want to look at. So if we rotate this into place, we can get pretty close with this. It does not have to be perfect. So this vector is what we want to look at. Now remember, in subtraction, the order matters, but the result of subtraction is a vector that faces in the direction of the first operator. So in this particular case, if we were to subtract purple from green, so green minus purple, what we end up with is a vector that points to green. Okay, so you can see that this final vector, actually let's just change this back to our yellow so we can see this. If my enemy is facing straight ahead and my 
ally or an ally or whatever the objective is, is over here. If I want the enemy to turn and face this objective, what I can do is I can subtract the vector that represents their position from the vector that represents mine, and that is going to result in a vector that points at the enemy. So let's do this. Let's, let's draw this as we've done here. And we're going, because we don't have points, I'm going to uh, do this by hand a little bit. 400 and 1100, we'll keep these yellow points where they are. And this is 200, 200. So let's, let's draw this. So let's create a vector. Uh, vector. So let's make a vector. And this is going to represent our character position. In this case, uh, we said it was 200, 200. And then we're going to make another one. And it was 1100. I believe it was 1100 and 400. Okay. 400. So if we subtract the green, which is this one, this is the green one. from the purple one, or, or the purple from the green, what we get is a vector, and let's draw this one as a, a yellow vector, that represents the new direction, as well as the distance or magnitude of the difference. So if we were to draw this, now you should be thinking, you should be thinking that this this is going to be the correct vector. Hopefully you're thinking it's going to be the correct vector, but it's not going to be in the right position because it's going to start at zero, zero because we're using this thing to draw the line. Now, in this particular case, um, I have typed it in wrong, possibly. Let's just double check this. 1100 and X. Oh, I have it backwards. It's 400 Y. I have those two flipped. So let's just flip these. This is 400 and 1100. Okay, so now when we come back here, you'll notice that this vector, this yellow line, is drawing the new facing angle we would want to have our, our character look at, our enemy look at. Even though it's visualized from the origin, you can see that it lines up. And if we wanted to, we could do the same thing. We could use a little bit of vector math to get it to line up, and to do that, Remember what we can do is we can take our character start position. That's going to be where it's going to start from. And we're going to add that to the result. And then what's going to happen is this is going to offset our vector to be in space to start at our enemy and end at our target. So you can see now we've offset that line. So that is the use of subtraction. Now it's important. I'm going to actually undo that. I want to show you one more thing. The order does matter. So we started, you saw that the line went from zero to in the direction it was parallel. If we switch this order, you'll notice that our vector is actually going to point the wrong way. So it's actually pointing the opposite direction. So the order does matter. So in this particular case, we wanted to make sure that we uh, basically it points at whichever one is the first. So in this case, the green was the first one. If we subtract from green, basically by subtracting the purple from the green, we get a line that represents the visual of a direction and a magnitude. Now, the other cool thing is the magnitude or the length of that vector is the exact distance the character needs to go. So it could be the exact distance the character needs to go. It could also represent uh, you know, where you want to throw an object to, so it gets there and so on. It also could represent uh, the amount of force that you need to use to get there, depending on how you're, how you're, like maybe you're doing dashes or something like that. So we have now covered what a, what a geometric or physics vector is, direction and length. We can normalize them. We can multiply to change their length. We can add, we can subtract. What else can we do with vectors that is cool and worth knowing about uh, as part of this intro? One of those is something called a dot product. All right, so what is a dot product? 
dot product, again, this is vector mass. The point to understand about a dot product is if you take the dot product of two vectors, the result, uh, uh, as long as they're normalized, the result is going to be somewhere between negative one and one. If it's gr basically, if it's one, the vectors are facing the exact same direction. Magnitude is not calculated. Magnitude is not a factor here, but if it's one, directors face the same, vectors face the same direction. If it's zero, they're perpendicular. And if it's negative one, they point in opposite directions. So let me demonstrate that. If we take and we get, let's make a new vector. This vector we're going to make is going to be a vector that basically points to the right. And then I'm going to get my actor facing and the forward vector from that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the dot product. Uh, hold on a second. I need to normalize this first. So let's normalize this to make it one I, of, of length one. And then let's take the dot product of this. You just type in dot. Now, you don't have to know all the math that happens behind this. That's fine. All you need to know is why it's useful. So let me show you why it's useful. And then I'll explain to you a case that you might you might use this for. If we go print string, what you're going to end up with is if we print this out, let's make this a nice bright uh, yellow, for example. If we print this out, you'll notice that it's printing zero to start with. That is because our vector is pointing to the right, okay, and our character is pointing straight ahead. That means they're perpendicular. They're exactly 90 degrees. If you're not familiar with that term, what that means is the two vectors are 90 degrees to each other. It makes a perfect right angle. Some of that old school geometry stuff. Now notice when I look to the right, when I change my character to face to the right, the numbers are gonna change. So if we click in here and we go right, you'll notice it's printing 0.99999. It's almost perfectly one. What that is telling us is my character is facing the same way as the vector I'm comparing it against. If I look straight ahead again, you'll notice it gets close to zero. If I look straight towards us, it's also pretty close to zero. So if I'm pointing to the right, it's positive one. If I'm pointing to the left now, notice it goes to negative one. So if it's negative one, the closer it gets to negative one, the more perfectly opposite they're facing. So another way to say this is if you're pointing to the right, if the dot product is one, the vectors are parallel. They're facing the same direction. So what, what can we use this for? What's cool about this? Well, one great example is let's take a one-way door. If I wanted to set it up so that if I walked through, I could walk through a door only one direction, I could use the vector of which way the door is facing and do a dot product. If the dot product is greater than zero, my character is walking through the door, for example. The minute I get through the door, if I turn around and try to go back through, the dot product is now negative. It's not, it's not greater than zero anymore. That door is locked. So I could quickly set up the idea that it's a one-way door, for example. That's one use of a dot product. The point to understand, though, is there's a thing called a dot product. You can use it to calculate whether or not two vectors are facing the same way, opposite directions or not. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is you are perpendicular whether you're facing forward or backwards. They're both zero. So you do need to be careful if you're checking to see if it's perf perfectly perpendicular because you don't know which way perpendicular when you're using that. So generally speaking, um, I don't use this a ton, the perpendicularness of it, but you might definitely use the positive or negative one as an example. And you can set your tolerances as well. Like basically if it's 0.1, then it's, let's say that that's technically nine degrees maybe, I think. Anyways, overall point is that's how the dot product is used. Unreal is doing the math for us. Now we have one more cool thing to look at and that is called the cross product. Now, I do not use the cross product nearly as much as just addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Occasionally I'll use a dot product, but it's good to at least know that the cross product exists. So let's take two vectors. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to draw both of these.
and we'll draw them as uh let's draw them as a green line and a purple line and then once we make sure these are drawing i'll show you what the cost product looks like so these should be each 200 units long visualized from the origin and you can see we have let's see here what do we have here oh okay hold on i want this to be i want these to be perpendicular like so and then double check okay so we have a green arrow and a purple arrow these are represent our two vectors it doesn't matter where they are in space because remember they don't have a position in space the point is it's two vectors that face uh, different directions now if we take the cross product the result of that is going to be a vector that is pointing perpendicular to our vectors. What does that mean? Well, let's take this and let's take the cross product of these two and let's draw this as a red arrow. Roger. Now, there's going to be some nuance here. I'll explain it in a second. So if we go and look at this, you'll notice that you don't see it. It's technically below. It's pointing downward. So the order in which you do your cross product does matter depending on which coordinate system you're in. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to flip these. If we take the cross product of these two, now when we go and we look, you'll notice that our red vector is pointing up. Now it's pointing way up to the sky. So what I'm actually going to do but when I do the cross product is I'm going to normalize these first. And then with that normalized, if we draw it now, it's going to be super tiny. Oh wait, how did I do? Okay, yeah, it's going to be super tiny. We're not going to be able to see it because it's a tiny red arrow. So then I'm going to use a little bit more of our vector learnings. And I'm going to take that result and I'm going to multiply it by a number. Let's do a multiply here. Right click on the pen. Convert to single precision float. Let's do 200 just to make it the same length. And we will draw that line in. So now when we take a look at what we see, you can see we have a new vector that is red that is pointing perpendicular to the other two. Now. Okay, you taught us all that. That's great. Why? When do we use this? Well, we are already using it all the time. This is a great example of how the normal of a triangle is calculated, for example, on a surface. So if you want to know which way a face on a surface is facing, think about the triangle. The smallest unit of a face is a triangle. It has three sides. Each of those sides could be considered a vector. And if we take those two of those and we do a cross product, what we get is we get a third vector that is pointing perpendicular to the surface. So we can use that to calculate the normals, for example, of a polygon. The other way you could use this potentially in your game and dev experience is you could use that to calculate which way a wall is facing, the normal to the wall, to decide whether or not, for example, your character is going to be able to do run along the walls if you wanted to be specific. You could do it, you could do it based on a tag, but you could also do it based on whether or not the cross product is a vector that is acceptable for you to do a wall run, for example. So overall, that wraps up our introduction to vectors for creatives and uh, blueprint fundamentals. Bottom line is when we're talking about vectors, it's to keep in mind, to separate out the understanding. There is a vector that represents some number of, some number of numbers. So for example, X, Y, Z, R, G, V. That is one use of a vector. Could be a position or a color, etc. Then there is the geometric or physics version of a vector which is literally a direction and a length. And there's all kinds of cool stuff we can do with them. We've done a bunch of it here to help, just to help solidify in your mind what that all means. But we can normalize it, which means change it to length of one. We can multiply it by any number we want to scale the length of our vector. We can add and subtract 
addition order doesn't matter subtraction order definitely matters and we talked about a couple uh, fun maths things with the dot product and the cross product as always thanks for checking out the video hope you found this useful if you have any questions throw them down in the comments if there's something that's not clear throw them down in the comments we will take another swipe at this uh, all transparency this is about that third time i recorded this video because i kept thinking that there was a better way to explain it so hopefully you all dig it and i will see you in either the next live stream or the next video thanks for watching